so today we are going to be doing something on a laboratory examination of feces uh, feces is generally referred to as a stool so first and forward uh, we are going to do the collection see how do we collect uh, the stool specimen uh, so we must ensure that uh, good specimens are collected uh, it is important to take note of uh, the following uh, you should use a clean and a dry container urine and water destroys some of the trophozoites uh, in the stool sample so whenever you give a container the container should be dry and clean we'll bring the specimen to the lab as soon as it is passed out uh, the longer you stay with it the more the protozoa uh, deteriorate in morphology uh, also the helminths deteriorate in the morphology uh, the specimen container should be clearly labeled with the patient's name date and time in which the the specimen is passed the amount of the stool sample should be adequate enough it shouldn't be too little or too much actually there is what we call rectal swabs a rectal swab is whereby um, the swab is inserted in the rectum for about 10 seconds uh, the specimen must reach the laboratory within 30 minutes of collection and passing of the stool uh, since uh, motile organisms such as the vibrio and the uh, moebic trophozoites uh, are heat sensitive and they can die and become unrecognizable. Transport media uh, such as uh, Cariblea medium can be used uh, to transport uh, Salmonella, Shigella and Yersinia species. Uh, uh, in a situation where you are su uh, suspecting cholera, uh, you can use uh, about one uh, milliliter specimen and you transfer it to uh, uh, an alkaline pepton water uh, which will act as an enrichment uh, media uh, as well as a transport media when you are support when you are suspecting a, a cholera uh, when worms and tapeworm segments are present uh, they should be transferred in a container of uh, physiological saline and sent uh, to the laboratory for identification uh, so the second thing that we will do macroscopic observation of the fecal sample macroscopic observation of the stool can give you a clue to the type of organism that is present in the stool so consistency uh, normal stools uh, are formed that is normal stool uh, and in diarrhea and dysentery uh, the stools are semi-solid and watery in nature uh, but uh, cysts have been uh, mostly found in formed stools uh, while trophozoites uh, have been mostly abundant in uh, watery stools uh, so you must also note the color of the stool uh, the color of the stool uh, the normal adult stool color is brown due to bile pigments uh, and the color of stool is affected by the type of food you eat the type of food that you eat will affect the color for example, infant fetuses are yellow-green and semi-formed. Uh, abnormal fish color include the watery, like rice water stool, for example, in Vibrio cholerae, clay or white color, obstructive jaundice, uh, is present presence of barium sulfate, reddish color, uh, for example, during blood uh, from lower gastrointestinal tract, beef consumption can also lead to reddish color black stool in bleeding in the upper GIT melena iron or charcoal green color ingestion of um, spinach or greens or antibiotics can lead to uh, a green colored stool uh, another thing is that the presence of blood and mucus or pus in the stool should also be noted down uh, blood and mucus uh, in the case of amoebic dysentery and uh, uh, entamoeba histolytica, uh, can lead to the presence of blood and mucus in stool. Uh, Confilobacteria and E. coli uh, can also shigella, salmonella, all these organisms can lead to blood in stool. Also the clostridium species can lead to blood in stool. Presence of adult worms sh should never be assumed. Uh, this can also be seen in uh, freshly passed out stools. Um, like uh, the eggs of Ascaris, Lumbricoides, Enterobius vermiculus, 
protoglandin of tiny species can also be seen. Uh, so we will go to the next aspect where we will discuss the microscopic examination. So the microscopic examination, uh, you examine the fecal specimen under power 10 and power 40 objectives of the light microscope and you report the presence of a large number of pus cells. Uh, you also report the presence of uh, leukocytes uh, such as less than 5 per high power field or presence of cholera, things like that, RBCs, amoebiasis, flagellates, egg, larva and cyst. All this you must report. Um, so the most thing that we do is stool analysis for ova and cyst. These are parasites uh, that produce the ova and cyst. Uh, so we can do stool analysis for parasites using uh, normal saline. Uh, that is normal saline 0.8%. Uh, for routine examination of stool samples uh, to detect egg, larva, protozoa, cyst. Uh, this can also detect RBCs and WBCs. We can also use iodine. Iodine used to examine nucleic cyst and to stain the glycogen. The number of parasites in the stool is low, uh, then a direct or wet mount might make you miss some parasites. So what you will do, you will go for the concentration techniques whereby you concentrate the parasites at one point. Eh? Uh, you can use the sedimentation procedure or the flotation procedure. Concentration techniques include things like the formal ether preparation or the cattle cuts technique of uh, stool analysis. Uh, so we can also do chemical examination of the stool whereby we check the pH. Uh, normal pH is weak acidic, maybe 6 thereabout. Uh, the pH of stool is acidic in amoebic, amoebic dysentery. Uh, and alkaline in basilic dysentery. We can also do occult blood, which generally is called the hidden blood. Occult blood uh, may be present in a number of diseases, such as malignancies of the GIT, such as the colon, rectum, and the stomach. You can also check reducing factors, such as mono sugars and dye sugar. And actually do culture and sensitivity to stool samples. And uh, the culturing media of choice, you can use McConkie agar, uh, which inhibits the gram-positive organism, differentiates between lactose fermenters and non-lactose fermenters. Uh, McConkie agar is a differential media. We can use xylose lysine deoxychocolate, which is called the XLD. The XLD agar, it is selective medium that has been uh, recommended for isolation of salmonella and particularly shigella from fecal samples. We can also use thio thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose TCBS agar. Uh, this is an excellent medium uh, for primary isolation of uh, vibrio, cholerae or just the cholera. Then we have the sobitol maconchis agar. The Maconchis agar containing sorbitol uh, instead of uh, lactose uh, can be used in the uh, separation of the pathogenic E. coli, which is um, H0157. Uh, and in this case, it will produce colorless colonies of the medium uh, because it does not ferment sorbitol. So the medium is useful in uh, screening of the 0157 E. coli, which is a pathogenic. Uh, Special of the E. coli. So while culturing the sample, stool is cultured on selective medium by striking a loop full of stool specimens. I will actually give you a list of some of the common parasites morphologically uh, that are found in stool. Thank you for staying with me. This is the end of uh, stool analysis. 
and forget to like share subscribe and bye bye